This anesthetic, that's what stings. Not this good. A little brighter, please. I like to make a little groove so I can get started deep in the incision. Nice diamond knife made by Mastel. I just puncture with the Crafutrata. Push and lift a little to get a vertical start to the capsule rexus. Stop here at the 12 o'clock where I can get a good grasp of it again. And this is a cannula I had me a catena make for me. It's a twenty six gauge cannula. Chang's modification is a 27 and his is straight, whereas this has a little curve in it to get over the brow and we used to make more superior incisions. And then I'll turn it. Look at the light, please. They make slow torsional uh, force to let it unzip a little bit. And jerky movements aren't as effective and make sure you squirt out the cortex. Look straight ahead. This is my modification of Arshanov's soft shell technique. I put a little provisc there to push that loose cortex away from the cornea. And it aspirates along with the cortex now and uh, creates a nice uh, optical dome of the viscoat. This is a Hefliger. Dr. Hefliger calls this a cleaver, not a chopper, because it can slice. I like to slice the lens into small pieces of cake or pie. Look toward the light. Now if this if it's a dense lens, it's important to make sure that you get that completely separated before trying to chop, otherwise it doesn't separate.
I leave Epinucleus there. And again, make small slices. And And dividing those can be with uh, a uh, separation and a combination of movements, uh, vertical and horizontal. And sometimes it doesn't like to turn. Get two instruments on it, it usually works better. this stage I make sure my second instrument is under the tip because the posterior capsule is exposed without any epinucleus to protect it. So you can aspirate to engage but before phacoing Now I'd like to make sure that all the viscoat is out. Sometimes there's pieces hung up here by the uh, paracentesis or the incision. And turn off before coming out. I like to make that a habit because <clears throat> in the floppy iris, the iris will sometimes come out of the incision if you're irrigating as you come out. And we start with a low setting. Machines used to have I min and I max. So we've got a maximum of 130 here. That way I can titrate the vacuum a little better. Now we turn it up to the higher vacuum setting here. I don't have to turn the port down against the capsule as much, so I'll just start with the high setting. That okay, cortex. So when I have to turn it back like that, that's when I use that low setting. My scrub nurses are trained to watch the monitor and they know when I want cortex. Cortex. And on that low vacuum setting, I like to polish the anterior capsule and remove as much of the lens epithelial cells as I can reach. And polish. go to the polish setting, it's practically the lowest settings we can go on vacuum and flow. 
And I also have the irrigation bottle programmed to come down so that the poster capsule flattens. When I put in the provisc now, notice how I go tangential to the incision. Just to guard against the patient moving, poking the posterior capsule. That's a 2.2 millimeter incision. So we use the wound to assist here. And I just push the plunger all the way out and use it as my spatula to push the trailing haptic, loosen it from the optic. Now we have it set at 600 maximum. With the cohesive viscoelastic, the higher the vacuum, the, the more cohesive it is. So it probably pulled out everything from behind the lens, but I never take a chance. I, I still get behind the optic and, and vacuum to make sure. And I'm turning the lens so that the haptics are perpendicular to the paracentesis. Because <clears throat> I want to put vancomycin underneath the lens, into the capsular bag. So I'll give it a little hydration. And I just run the uh, cannula to make sure that the inner lip is not look down just a little look to the right a little I just want to make sure I have sealed incisions before going with the vancomycin, which is now in the syringe. It's so I just push down a little on the optic and that allows you to get underneath.
I'm centering the lens, I think of the visual axis usually being a little bit superior nasal. <clears throat> so I want to make sure that we don't have the lens superior temporal or anything that's centered or a bit superior nasal. And uh, just confirm the pressure. Look up now, please. Look up, away from the light. Look up toward your forehead. That's good. I think our paracentesis is sealed. We have a firm eye now. Diamond paracentesis. And there's subconjunctival. I like to find where there's no vessels. And make a small opening in the conch so that it drains better. Okay, we're finished with your surgery.